Yo, what's up everyone? It's Dr. Cool and we're diving deep into the world of innovation today, a world that might just redefine what's possible. We're talking about Maxwell Chikambutso, an inventor who stirred up a storm with claims of a self-powered car. That's right, a car that runs without needing to be plugged in or refueled. Now, this isn't just some concept art or a far-off dream. Chikambutso claims to have functional prototypes already built and running. As you can imagine, the internet's buzzing with excitement, skepticism and everything in between. Some are calling it a revolutionary breakthrough, while others are raising eyebrows, questioning its authenticity. And hey, I get it. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. That's exactly why we're here today. We're breaking down the details, separating hype from reality and tackling the big questions. When will this car actually hit the market? Where can you buy it? How much will it cost? And most importantly, is this technology even legit? Let's jump right in. So the million dollar question, when can you actually get behind the wheel of a Chikumbutso electric car? Well, right now, it's still in the development phase. There's no official release date, but from what we've gathered, Chikumbutso and his team are laser focused on getting this car road ready. Think about it. This isn't just about building a car. It's about revolutionizing an entire industry. They're not just slapping together some parts. They're essentially rewriting the rules of energy consumption in vehicles. That kind of groundbreaking tech takes time to perfect, to optimize, and to make sure it's safe and reliable for everyday use. Now, while we don't have a hard launch date, we can look for clues. Chikumbutso's company, Sayeth Technologies, has been dropping hints about potential partnerships and they've been actively engaging with investors. They're not just holing themselves up in a lab somewhere. They're actively looking for the right collaborations to bring this tech to the masses. This tells me they're serious about getting this car out there and they're not shying away from the spotlight. Keep in mind, this isn't some Silicon Valley startup with unlimited funding. They're working hard to secure the resources and support they need to scale up production. But hey, even Tesla started somewhere, right? It's all about recognizing potential and understanding that game-changing tech doesn't happen overnight. So, while we wait for a concrete release date, it's clear that Chikumbutso and his team are making moves, and they're determined to get this car on the road sooner rather than later. All right, let's say Chikumbutso pulls it off and the self-powered car becomes a reality. Where do you even buy one? Now, traditional dealerships might not be the first place that comes to mind. This is a whole new breed of vehicle and it might require a different approach to sales and distribution. We could be looking at direct-to-consumer online sales, kind of like how Tesla initially rolled things out. Imagine configuring your self-powered car online, choosing your specs and having it delivered straight to your doorstep. Or they might partner with existing EV dealerships, leveraging their infrastructure and customer base to reach a wider audience. But here's the thing, with any groundbreaking tech, you've got to be wary of scams. Once this car starts generating buzz, you can bet there will be people trying to cash in on the hype. So, until there's official word from Chikumbutso or Scythe Technologies, don't entertain any offers, pre-orders or suspicious websites claiming to sell the car. Stick to official channels, follow their social media and wait for legitimate announcements. Remember, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Don't fall victim to scams promising you the moon and back. Patience is key here, my friends. When the time is right, you'll know exactly where to get your hands on this revolutionary car. And when are we expecting this to actually be commercialized and in the market? We have started commercial. We are in the commercial uh, stage starting from tomorrow. We've got small machines. Most of them, they've been bought with these guys who came. We've got guys from DRC. Uh, he bought some machines as well. We didn't have much, but right now we are now in operation. And whoever who wants a machine can now get it. We have got our um, distributor here in Zimbabwe who is going to be handling all the sales in Zimbabwe. So from now going onwards, you can now get the machines. How many are readily available in the market? And if you can help us with the pricing? Uh, okay, I cannot uh, give you the actual number, but I will just tell you something. The guys in South Africa, they give us an order for 3,000 machines. They give for South Africa and they give us 20,000 machines for Zambia. That's a uh, taste Rosa, the one that you saw. Um, I've been working with him for so many years. He bought my first 50 kilowatts machine. He's a lawyer. He's a commercial lawyer in South Africa. So 
and Nadim. I think if you have seen when we went to a company that wanted to partner which make buses, Nadim, he is the person who took us there. So these are the people that I've been working with. We have got my technologies and right now, as of today, we have got 20,000 in Zambia and we have got 3,000 uh, in South Africa. We are not talking of other countries like Switzerland. I'm not so sure. I'm meeting tomorrow the guys from Switzerland. Uh, but what I know right now, they bought a car, one of our cars and one of our motorbikes, which they are taking with them. So I think that is enough proof. Developing groundbreaking tech takes more than just a brilliant mind. It takes resources, support and some serious backing. So, who's standing behind Chikumbutso in this ambitious endeavour? Well, it's interesting because it's not just about big-name corporations throwing money at the project. While we don't have details on specific companies investing in Scyth technologies, there are whispers of interest from various corners of the globe. Think about it. The potential of a self-powered car has caught the attention of energy companies, automotive giants and tech investors alike. But what's particularly noteworthy is the support Chikumbutso has received from his home country, Zimbabwe. The government has recognized the potential of his inventions, not just for the automotive industry, but for the entire nation. They've publicly acknowledged his work, provided him with a platform, and even offered him land to establish a research facility. This kind of backing from a government speaks volumes about their belief in his vision and their commitment to fostering innovation. It's not every day you see a government actively supporting such a potentially disruptive technology. This tells me that Chikumbutso's work is being taken seriously at the highest levels, and that's a big deal. It adds a layer of legitimacy to his claims and suggests that he's not just some lone inventor toiling away in obscurity. He's got the attention and support of his nation, and that could be a game changer in terms of propelling his inventions onto the global stage. Yeah. So the vehicle it is part of what we call a microsonic energy device that is the after a round of Yeah, the vehicle it uses what we call the microsonic energy device. The microsonic energy device it is the the device that I personally invented in 2009, which harnesses radio frequencies, converts it into energy. As you know, radio frequencies they are measured in nano volts, meaning to say they are less than a volt. They are just like nothing. But we find a way of harnessing it through the the, the creation of uh, the 70 percent of the components in the microsonic energy, which I tell me to have designed. So. Those are the components that that, that enable the, the radio frequency to be transferred into pure, useful energy. And this is the first time in the world. With that technology, it violates uh, the laws of energy in, thermo in, in thermodynamics and also the first law of energy as well. So they wanted to arrest him for change the physics. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Even when we tried to file a patent, they said we were violating the natural laws of physics. Mm. So it's not an industrial applicable. We decided to take the trade secret route after that. So with this car, you can also use it to power your house. It is a moving generator. When you drive from work uh, back to your home, you can connect your power cable, then you can power your house. It, is, it gives you 15 kilowatts uh, power to power your house. And the vehicle itself it has got 160 uh, kilowatts electric motor which gives you a torque of about 300 and, uh, 308, 320 to 308 newton meters of, meters of torque. That means it's, it's fast. And um, we are talking of a um, horsepower of around 215 horsepower. So when we compare this car with the, with the same cars of, of this model, like the Toyota, the Toyota and Eben Cruiser, you will see that this is a efficient in everything when you talk of load our car doesn't weigh much it weighs 1405 kgs only when you talk of an airplane cruiser you're talking of about 1800 so that means you can carry extra baggage in the vehicle top speed is 220 kilometers per hour yeah which is fast it has got two driving modes we have got the sport mode 
which will give you 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in around two seconds. That is very, very powerful. Then you've got what we call a normal driving mode when you want to drive like in town. You can select that one so that it, it won't give you a, a lot of torque. The vehicle, which is highly, uh, it is a technological marvel to say because it has got so many things that you can find only on big cars such like Mercedes Benz, Range Rover. Now let's talk price. How much is this revolutionary self-powered car going to set you back? Well, there's no official word yet, but we can speculate based on a few factors. First off, Chikumbuzo has repeatedly emphasized his mission to make his inventions accessible to the masses. He's not aiming for an exclusive luxury car that only the ultra-wealthy can afford. He wants to revolutionize transportation for everyone, making clean energy accessible and affordable. This suggests that the price point won't be astronomically high. It's unlikely to be in the same league as a high-end Tesla, for example. Instead, we might be looking at a price range comparable to mid-range electric vehicles currently on the market. Of course, the final price will depend on production costs, demand and various other market factors. But if Chikumbuzo's commitment to affordability holds true, we could be looking at a game-changer in terms of pricing. Imagine a world where a self-powered car is within reach for the average consumer. That's the kind of disruption that could truly shake up the automotive industry. It's not just about the technology itself, it's about making it accessible and affordable for the masses, and that's a goal worth supporting. The self-powered car isn't the only trick up Chikum Butso's sleeve. He's also claimed to have developed other groundbreaking inventions, including a self-powered generator and a superbike. Let's start with the generator. Imagine a world where you no longer have to rely on traditional power grids. Chikumbuzo's generator is said to produce electricity without needing any external fuel source. This could be a game changer for developing countries, rural areas, and even disaster relief efforts. It could provide a reliable source of clean energy to communities that lack access to traditional power grids. Now, on to the superbike. While details are scarce, this electric motorcycle is said to be powered by the same technology as the car, meaning it wouldn't require charging. It's like something out of a sci-fi movie. These inventions, while still in their early stages, highlight the breadth of Chikumbuzo's vision. Yeah, which is fast, it has got two driving modes. We have got the sport mode, which will give you zero to 100 kilometers per hour in around two seconds. Chikumbuzo also talks about his journey to Silicon Valley in the United States of America where he was poisoned together with his partner, who passed on for defying the laws of physics. We were poisoned at that time. Dr. Teddy didn't make it. He died in January 2017. I survived by the grace of God. Uh, so I was always in Zimbabwe and United States of America until he heard about myself. Then he invited me. The president. He, the president, yes. Then he invited me to, 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 to come back and put my base in Zimbabwe. So right now I'm based in Zimbabwe. President Munangagwa says he called him back home to do his work here in Zimbabwe and he's happy to grasp. He's not just focused on one application of his technology, he's exploring its potential across various industries. The self-powered generator, if it proves to be viable, could revolutionize how we think about energy access and distribution and the superbike, well, that's just plain cool. It shows that Chikumbuzo isn't afraid to push the boundaries of what's possible and he's constantly exploring new ways to apply his inventions. Now, let's address the elephant in the room, the skepticism surrounding uh, Chikumbuzo's claims. It's natural to be skeptical when something sounds too good to be true, right? And a car that powers itself definitely falls into that category. Some critics argue that the laws of physics simply don't allow for a self-powered car. They point to the principle of conservation of energy, which states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed from one form to another. They argue that Chikumbuzo's inventions violate this fundamental principle. Others question the lack of independent verification. While Chikumbuzo has demonstrated his inventions to various media outlets and government officials, there hasn't been rigorous testing or peer-reviewed scientific papers published on his work trappings of modern vehicles. The current vehicles were assembled in China using Chikumbuzo's powertrain of radio frequencies. If fully produced, 
the vehicles could cut Zimbabwe fuel import, and Sungulani suspects that the oil and vehicle manufacturers in the United States could have had a hand in his poisoning. Soon Zimbabwe will launch to the world what her young minds can do for the country and humanity, said the president. Rup this lack of transparency fuels skepticism and makes it difficult for the scientific community to fully assess his claims. Then there's the issue of patents. Let's imagine for a moment that Chikumbutso's technology is the real deal. What kind of impact could it have? Well, the implications are massive and far-reaching, potentially disrupting entire industries and reshaping our world as we know it. First and foremost, the automotive industry would be turned upside down. The need for gasoline and diesel would plummet, dealing a significant blow to oil and gas giants. Electric charging stations would become obsolete, as would the infrastructure built around them. Traditional car manufacturers would need to adapt quickly or risk being left behind in this new era of self-powered vehicles. But the ripple effects would extend far beyond the automotive sector. The energy industry would undergo a seismic shift. Power plants that rely on fossil fuels would see a decline in demand as individuals and businesses become less reliant on traditional power grids. Renewable energy sources already on the rise would receive an even greater boost as the world transitions towards cleaner and more sustainable energy solutions. Governments would need to rethink infrastructure plans, transportation policies and energy regulations. Tax revenues from gasoline sales would dwindle, requiring new sources of funding for roads and public transportation. And let's not forget the environmental impact. The widespread adoption of self-powered vehicles would significantly reduce carbon emissions, helping to combat climate change and improve air quality in urban areas. So where do we go from here? As it stands, Chikumbutso's inventions remain shrouded in a mix of excitement, skepticism and unanswered questions. The scientific community is eagerly awaiting concrete evidence and peer-reviewed studies to validate his claims. The world watches with bated breath, wondering if this is the dawn of a new era or simply an intriguing footnote in the history of innovation. One thing's for sure, Chikumbutso's work has sparked a conversation, a debate about the limits of technology and the potential for groundbreaking advancements to reshape our world. Whether his inventions ultimately live up to the hype or not, his story serves as a reminder that innovation often emerges from unexpected places and that challenging conventional wisdom can lead to extraordinary breakthroughs. For now, we remain cautiously optimistic, eager to see what the future holds for Chikumbutso's inventions and the impact they could have on our world. The journey of innovation is rarely a straight line. It's filled with twists, turns, setbacks and triumphs. And as we continue to follow Chikumbutso's story, we're reminded that the pursuit of groundbreaking advancements is often just as important as the inventions themselves. It's about pushing the boundaries of what's possible, challenging the status quo, and inspiring others to dream big. So that's the deal with Maxwell Chikumbutso and his self-powered car. It's a story full of intrigue, potential, and a whole lot of questions that still need answers. What do you guys think? Is this the real deal or is it too good to be true? Would you be first in line to buy a car that never needs to be plugged in? Or are you waiting for more proof? Hit that comment section and let me know. And hey, while you're there, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future updates on this and other tech that's pushing the boundaries. As always, thanks.